Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spotlight Series. Today I'm joined by the amazing Denise Litchfield. Honestly, I don't know why we haven't spoken on the Spotlight Series before, but we're here today and we're going to be talking about intuition. So welcome Denise and can you tell everyone a little bit about your business? Thank you so much for having me. It's just, I feel like I'm on a very special space here, so it's really cool. Um, tell you about intuition. Your business first. Oh, my business. Yeah, sure. I got all carried away and starstruck then. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess I, I'm an intuitive, I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, and it's pretty much what I do anyway. If I wasn't in business, I'd still be doing this. And it's basically just helping people understand that they have psychic and intuitive ability, that it's natural and it's normal and it's no big deal. And just basically to demystify some of the stuff that's around there. And um, I just love helping people understand their own gifts, really. Mm, gorgeous. I love mm. it. You also have a puppy named Bruce who looks like he could be Munchkin's brother. So we do have a bit of a connection through our doggies as well, which is super cute. And um, so, Denise, tell me... What do you think is the reason why women in business should tap into their intuition? Like, why is it so important to even acknowledge that we have this ability? Well, I think people that are really good in business are using their intuition. Mm. And, and really, you know, we study whatever we love, we study. Whatever we make our life mission, we spend a lot of time learning about it, don't we? You know, we, we just soak up as much as we possibly can. And it gets to a point after a while when we know it so well that those decisions and those ideas just come. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, where did that idea come from? You know, and you could say it's all my years of experience in this field, my professional experience, or you could say, hey, you know, that might be my intuition. And I'm, I'm in the intuition camp, you know. Mm -hmm. so I, I believe that business is absolutely guided by intuition. Mm, I love it. So what do you think are some of the reasons why people might deny their intuition? Why they might like say, nah, that's not, that's not right. Why, why does that happen for people? Yeah. Oh, look, so many reasons. A lot of it is mindset, you know, just like anything else, it's, it's 80% mindset and 20%, you know, skill and analysis and everything else. But I think they deny it because they might think it's woo woo it, out there. Um, what will people think of them? Um, all sorts of reasons like that. A lot of sort of external perceptions about mm. what will people think or who will I be if I admit that I might be intuitive. Yeah. And I actually see this quite a lot in people who work in business coaching or those more professional fields. They actually feel like by acknowledging their intuition plays a part it's going to discredit their service in some way like you can't be intuitive and teach business strategy because then people will just think i'm making it up and and so there's like this almost like it can be discrediting to your business if you actually put the intuition label on it or talk about how some of that stuff happens so what do you think is the like how can people overcome that fear of, oh, my goodness, it's going to completely discredit my business. Yeah, like the flake factor. Yeah. Or the someone said to me, I had a client, and she said her husband said she's starting to become a charlatan online. <laughs> a charlatan. You mean shaman, but charlatan? Or? Yeah, no, charlatan was like a very old-fashioned word for someone who, like, ripped people off, right? And so yeah. she he, like her, her partner was like, you, like you're starting to talk about really weird things now. You're starting to sound like a charlatan, like like a rip-off merchant. And um, so, you know, I can see why that would be a fear that comes up for them. So, you know, how do people yeah. get over that? Um, yeah, that's interesting because I have this conversation with clients all the time. Mm. Uh, uh, people that want to use their intuition and they're in business already and they want to use it more and they, they come to me to learn and, and, and hone their skills. But then they're like, well, how do I put this into my regular, you know, my regular muggle job for my <laughs> business. And the thing I say to them is you don't have to say it's intuition. You don't have to call it anything. You can just say I have a hunch or I have a gut feeling or based on my X years of experience or, or X number of clients I've done, this is what I feel is mm. going to work. Because, you know, people aren't interested in how you've got that information. They're interested in the results. Mm. 
Oh, I love that. Oh, and it's so funny because actually for myself, I spent a long time saying I'm not an intuitive person. I'm definitely not an intu- I'm not in touch with intu- intuition. But every second sentence started with my gut feel is da 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 da, or you know what I'm thinking. Is. Like, and it was it really was just me not understanding that a lot of where that comes from is actually this whole concept of intuition and so I was being more intuitive and speaking more intuitively than I even gave myself credit for and it was actually more the intuitive people who would say like you keep saying you're not intuitive but then you tell me what your gut feel is like what's going on here and so I love what you're saying is like you don't have to say intuition and you don't have to sell yourself as an intuitive business coach in order to be seen as a business coach who uses her intuition Absolutely, absolutely. And there are people who shy away from, you know, I'm, I'm happily out and proud as a psychic, but there are people that shy away from that word too. So mm. I'm it's like, use whatever word or don't use any word. It doesn't really matter because you've got to feel okay about how you do your work and your process. And for me, I would much rather work with an intuitive business coach than, you know, a, a, a standard business coach because I need someone that relates to me and how I work. So mm. I think there's room for everybody out there. Yeah, absolutely. And some people will be drawn to it and some people won't, but that's perfect because if you try and talk to everyone, you end up talking to no one. It really does help you secure that space in the market that's you know, perfectly yours as well, which is just gorgeous. So, Denise, I have an, a follow-up question to that then. Is um, if someone is wanting to start bringing more intuition into their work and they want to even talk about it a little bit more, how can they do it in a way that feels safe? Right, you mean in their business? Mm. Like introduce it. Yeah. Right. Um Probably that I would say they're already doing it. Mm. They just haven't. They just haven't kind of picked that out of their natural thread and way of being. You know, anyone who writes about the way they feel, the how, how they they pick up things, how they respond. I mean, they're already using their intuition. So I would say, yeah, you know, just just own it a bit more. Yeah. And, um, um, look, there's a couple of techniques that, that I have been recommending is if you have a client beforehand and if you like cards, like say, who doesn't have an Oracle deck, right? Like, I don't. Um, I really need to get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, something. Even yep. if you, know, you tune in, I mean, there's got to be a time where if, before a client, you kind of tune into them, don't you? Yes, absolutely. You, 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 you probably get their notes out, but you're kind of all energetically tuning into that person before the session. Well, that's exactly what I do before I do a reading. Mm, awesome. And I love that. And I think that what that does is it helps people to grow into that space as well. So even for me, one thing that I have always done is when I run webinars, I don't have a script. And so I used to say, you know, it's off the cuff and I know what I'm talking about. And, you know, I love doing this. And I talk to my clients about this all the time. So it just comes really easily to me. But now I'm a little bit more comfortable in saying, hey, I'm just downloading this. I'm just, you know, I, I'm running off a structure, but the but my intuition will fill the gaps. And so, you know, I think also for me, I've been able to even creep up into that space, despite the fact that I say I'm not intuitive all the time and I was really resistant to that. It was a really easy way and a simple way. And I wasn't particularly conscious of that. I think I was just hanging out with more people who talked about it and were okay with it in the lady posse. And so therefore it kind of made it okay for me as well. So maybe there's also space for people to spend more time in that space if that's where they want to move towards, like hang out with more people who talk about intuition, understand that intuition is totally okay to be a topic of conversation or a part of your skills in your business as well. Absolutely. And that's why I love the lady posse because there's a place for everyone. Yeah. Yep. You know, and the thing, actually just going back what how you do the webinars, that's awesome. But the reason you can do that now is because of the great wealth of knowledge that you already possess and you have a very grounded, you're absolutely grounded and present. So when you are in front of camera, when you are in front of client, you're totally 100% present. And the fact that you're present and grounded, that's the two things you need to be for intuition to start rolling so you've got that down pat i'm not surprised that you, that you <laughs> are totally inspired to say what you need to say 
I'm writing that down. Present and grounded. Present, yes, present and grounded. Beautiful. Oh, that is so good. And um, we should also mention, and we're talking about surrounding yourself with other people, you have a fabulous Facebook group as well. Yeah, the Psychic Playground. And we, I think it's almost a year old now. Woohoo! So that's pretty cool. And you can hear Bruce in the background, can you? <laughs> he had to have his little cameo. He did. He yeah. was like wolf bombing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So Psychic Playground. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that the links are available in the show notes so people can uh, find out a bit more about the Psychic Playground and come and join in the conversation as well. Now, I have a question about your Facebook group. Do you have to be psychic in order to join the psychic playground? <laughs> no, you don't. Not at all. Not at all. Because no. <laughs> I was in there and actually for the first couple of months, I just felt like a little bit of an imposter. Like, I'm just here, you to, were like... <laughs> here to support Denise. That's what I'm here for. I'm just here to make up the numbers and to comment on everyone's thing and say it's amazing. And so, you know, I think it's been a really beautiful, gentle process for me to get into this space as well. I and get a free reading too because you finally got one. Reading. I finally got my free reading. Woohoo! <laughs> Very lucky. So, okay, on the present and grounded thing, if that's yeah. what's really required to tune into intuition, let's get into yeah. some practicality. Hmm. How do you ground yourself? How do you stay grounded? Oh, big one. Um, I think it's, it is really about owning your own space and the first few lessons, the first few things I ever work with anyone if they come to me to work with their intuition or get more psychic is to own your space. Mm. And that very much is to, oh, I love what um, Yelena talks about, Terena Weiwei. That's just my favourite word. <laughs> and, and I couldn't sum it up any better than she has. And, and it, she talks about um, your standing place. And that's really what it is, is you, you know where you are, you know your stuff, and you know who you are. And, and half of life is about finding out who you are, really. <laughs> you know, we do that in business. You need to know who we are and what we stand for. And once you realise this is what I stand for and this is who I am, your grounding just becomes almost automatic. Mm, yep. Beautiful. I love that. And I love Yelena. It's Yelena Kostugova's work. If you haven't checked her out, please do because she is amazing and her work on finding your standing place is just beautiful. And, um, and so also then, Denise, I think the big one is to be present. And that's why I left that to last because a lot of people there, um, even when I did like stage craft training my stage coach was talking about people have these sparkly bits like if they're thinking about themselves and they're not present in the moment they will it's almost like it's they're wearing this big banner around them they've got these big sparkly bits hanging out because their face just tells you i'm not here right now i'm freaking about the future or i'm freaking out about the past and not not being prepared enough or whatever it might be so do you have any advice for people on how to get really present and be in that moment Mm. Well, meditation is my thing. Mm. And, you know, I really only do 10 minutes. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But it helped me get present. And another exercise is to just sit. Like before we, we started this morning, uh, I was like just sitting and you just notice things around you. You're just like right now I can hear some building going on outside and, you know, there's Bruce here. And you just sort of notice things that are happening and after a while you kind of just go, okay, I think I know where I am. And it's mm. like a mindfulness exercise really. Yep. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, I love that. That's gorgeous. Mm. Okay, so Denise, one of my favourite things that you talk about is the fact that you don't have to wear crushed purple velvet in oh. order to be intuitive, psychic, a medium, work in this space, play in this space. Oh. What are some of like what are some of the other things that you've heard people like the assumptions that you've heard other people make about what it's like to be intuitive or psychic or work in this space? Oh my god, don't get me started. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Yeah, uh, I could get really ranty pants. But the, the main reason I get passionate about it is because it's, it, there's a feeling of exclusion around some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in that. I think that everyone has, you know, we were born intuitive. That's how, that's how come we knew there was a saber-toothed tiger outside the cave and mother's intuition when we know our children are sick or our fur babies are sick. You know, that stuff is inside us. We're born with that. We, it's not something that is given to us or 
you know, is a gift, although people talk about gifts and I'm kind of like, I understand the word, but I don't really go with the meaning. Mm. So I think one of the biggest thing that I get really passionate about is you have this, it's whether or not you would like to work with it. And you may have been in the line, you may have got a double helping of it. You know, I think I got a double helping of psychic and I got, you know, I wasn't in the how to use a remote control line because (laughs) or how to put your yoga pants on the right way because I wasn't in that line either. But, you know, so we do have certain skills, but it's whether or not we decide to, you know, do something or go somewhere with it. And if people understood that, then, you know, I'd probably be out of a job. (laughs) Well, luckily we've got you here to help us understand that and navigate that weird and rocky road sometimes. So I'm very grateful that you are doing the work that you're doing. And, um, you know, I even had um, a flatmate once told me I wasn't allowed to use a specific type of incense because I wasn't spiritual enough. And I think any of those types of things where, you know, it's that exclusion, it's going to get me ranty too, right? We're both girls who love to include people, to have people feel like they can belong regardless of their background, history, level of expertise, whatever it might be. We want to be more inclusive. And so I love the work that you do and the way that you do it because that is really the overriding principle is inclusion and that's Mm. just gorgeous. Mm. So, Denise, I understand that you have a delicious freebie that our listeners and viewers can uh, get their mitts on uh, to help them understand their intuition. They're grubby little psychic mitts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a quiz and it's a fun thing. And I, and I love this freebie because it, it's really the essence of what I'm about because I like to have fun, I like to have a laugh and I like to keep it light and, and easy. Mm. And so this quiz is called Find Your Psychic Strength and it's a, a fun thing with lots of great images and you just go through and click it and then you get a results um, of what your psychic strength can be and then an 11-page little booklet to help you dive in and get a little bit more into it and maybe some exercises if you want to play some more. Beautiful. And I've got to say it's one of the sexiest opt-ins I have ever seen on the internet. It is beautiful. The technology works gorgeously. It, uh, it's full of value. You know, that report that comes out of the end is just gorgeous and uh, very personalised to people. And I love the way that it works. So if anyone would like to grab Denise's freebie, all you need to do is go to tashcorbin.com forward slash freebies, F-R-E-E-B-I-E-S, and you will see Denise's lovely smiling face there and if you click on it it will take you through to the link to sign up to do Denise's quiz and uh, get your personalized report I came out as a sage which I thought was very fancy and um and when I did the quiz I was like oh yes that's it oh yes that is me so that was really awesome and it really just gave me this sense of wow it's not in my imagination I'm not going a bit cuckoo here this is a thing it's really validating because people can go, oh, yes, I do, you know, I do hear song snippets running through my mind and uh, I do see things out of the corners of my eyes and, or I do dream vividly and, and people, know, and then they go, oh, other people have it too. I'm not crazy. I'm not weird. I'm just normal. <laughs> That's totally normal. And um, also, Denise, one thing that I love to ask people uh, in these interviews is if I was to quote you on this topic of intuition, what is it that you would like me to say? I would say that as when it comes to intuition, your way is okay. <laughs> so the you perceive, Yeah, the way you do it, the way you perceive it is okay. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Thank you, Denise, so much for being on the Spotlight Series. It's been so awesome to talk with you. I can't believe we've gone 20 minutes already. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I really do encourage people to go and explore Denise's website. Go and have some fun with the work that she does because it is very inclusive. Join the Psychic Playground. Even if you're just like got both hands up going, oh, and freaking out. Join and see just how much fun it can be and just how beautiful that community is. Thank you once again, Denise, and until next time, we'll see you somewhere on the internet. Thanks a lot for having me. Beautiful. Thanks, Denise. Bye. Bye.